Hi everybody, this is Jessica joining you from Ashland Public Library in Ashland, Ohio um, for your craft noons today. Today we're going to be doing a wind chime made from either stuff you have laying around the house or recycled materials. So I'll go over the supply list. Um, first we're going to need either yarn or some string. I'm going to use both. Either or will work for both things that we need them for. A paper cup. I'm going to be using this little cone. I actually just found it in our craft room and it'll work out pretty nice. But you can use any of the paper cups that you get from the coffee shop or um, plastic will work also. But I will say it's going to be a lot easier to use paper just for what we're using it for. Um, scissors and a hole punch. You can use scissors. You don't necessarily have to have the hole punch, but it'll make life a lot easier. Um, an assortment of beads. I have some orange and yellow. And I also grabbed some little um, bells to put on it to, just to make it a little bit more no noisy as a wind chime. Um, just your regular beads that you use for making bracelets or necklaces. Um, and obviously you just want to make sure that whatever beads you use, the string or the yarn that you picked out will fit in. And then I also thought this was kind of cool. I grabbed some pop tabs, so they'll also be on my wind chime and something nice to be recycled. And then of course some markers or any type of coloring utensil. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to make some wind, wind chimes. So like I said earlier, I'm going to use this little cone. We're just going to color it however we want. And make some little dots here at the bottom. And obviously you can get as creative as you want. For time purposes, I'm not going to get too fancy here. Okay, so there's my cone or my cup. And now I'm going to use the scissors. So we're going to first, if you have just a regular old cup that doesn't have a top like mine, you can just punch a hole through it with your scissors. Um, that's kind of why I picked this because it was going to be a lot easier to put that first string in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to punch holes around the bottom of our cup. So along the rim, and you can put as many as you want. The holes around the bottom are going to be for the strings hanging down where our chimes will be. So just depends on how many you want to put on there. I'm just going to do probably like four, I think. And try to evenly space them out here. Okay. Okay, so again, we have a hole at the top and then our four holes at the bottom. And now I'm going to use a little bit heavy, more of a heavy duty string for the part that I'm going to hang the wind chime up with. And depending on how long you want our, your wind chime to hang down, it's how long you will cut the string. So you're going to fold it in half just like this. And we're going to feed it through that hole that we made at the top. Actually, it'll probably be a little easier to go through the top. So we'll just feed it through the two ends through the top so that we have a loop. that will be hanging from the top. Okay, so we have that. So you want it to kind of like dangle through and we're gonna tie the knot from the inside. Just 
just like that. And my hole is a little big, so I'm just going to do a double knot to make sure that it doesn't pop back through the top. Okay, so that's how it's going to hang. And if you wanted, you can do something fancy. If you know how to braid, you can braid the string going up or um, twist it. I'm just going to do that. We're going to start now on the bottom part where the beads are going to go. Um, so you can make them as long as you want. I'm going to make mine fairly short just so I don't have to put as many beads on them. And you're going to want to tie these all the way up to the cup. Just like that. So you'll just have a little string hanging down like that. Okay, so now it's time to fill it with a bunch of beads. And maybe a gold. And you can fill them all the way up to the cup or halfway or however many beads you have or materials. Um, Okay, I think I'm going to do a little bell now. Oops. My yarn got a little fuzzy there at the end. Okay. Okay. And then the one at the bottom, the bead that's at the bottom or your bell, whichever you're using, we're just going to tie it off to the end. That way it's like the end of your chime there. Because if you just make a knot, it's more than likely in the wind the beads will come loose. But if you have something tied to the end, it's a little more stable. And so that's our first little chime. Okay, we're going to make another string. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because you kind of want to make them all the same length. So when they hit each other, they'll make noise. So I'm just going to lay this out and kind of measure a little longer so you can tie the knot and we'll just feed it through the next hole. And we'll do this for all four of the holes or however many holes you put in the bottom of your cup. Okay, so now I've started on my very last string that I've made. Like I said before, I did four holes in the bottom of my cup. Um, so this is my fourth and final one. And I did alternate. I did 
or I'm going to do two bells and then on the opposite sides I did um, my little pop tabs. And let's do a yellow. And then I'm going to do my last bell here. And again, we're tying off that last bead or bell or pop tab just so the chime has an end to it and your beads don't completely fall off. And as I've been going, I've just been cutting off the excess yarn that I have. And voila, you've made a wind chime. Thank you guys and thanks for joining me for Crafternoons. Be safe and see you soon.